What up nerds, my name's Ryan, I did my HSE in 2019 and in this video I'm going to go through an essay paragraph that I wrote on religious and moral contradictions in The Merchant of Venice. In addition to this video, I also have three other videos on the complexity of human nature, emotions overriding values, and how gender roles are portrayed and subverted in the play. If you'd like to see any of those, click the link in the top right above now or in the description below. People's expression of religious morality can often contradict with their words and actions, revealing anomalies, paradoxes, and inconsistencies in human behavior and motivation. This idea of inconsistent morality is explored through the flaws of Antonio's religious morality. In the 16th century, the Jewish community of Venice was forbidden to own property and barred from practicing most professions. This made it difficult for Jewish people to develop financial security and wealth, and as a result, Jews were essentially forced to earn an income through the practice of usury, charging interest on borrowed money. Antonio shows that he believes it is immoral to exploit people's financial hardship for profit. While arguing with Shylock, Antonio cites the Bible describing sinful usury, a lender takes what he did not earn, to profit off another's need. The use of a biblical illusion demonstrates that Antonio and the greater Christian community regard usury as a sinful act that should not be practiced because it requires the exploitation of a person in financial hardship. However, it must be recognized that Antonio occupies a privileged position of power in Venetian society. As Venetian law forbids a Jew to own property or practice professions, Venetian Christians have essentially forced Jews into practices like usury because they had very few other options. Additionally, the laws hindering a Jew's ability to engage in the economy allow for less market competition for Christian merchants such as Antonio. Contradictory to Antonio's stated morality, it is the Venetian Christians who both enable the practice of usury and profit off the financial hardship of the Jewish community. Furthermore, a major cornerstone of Christian ethics is loving thy neighbor and a recognition of the individual as a distinct entity. Despite the noble Christian ideals of fellowship, Antonio treats Shylock with utter disrespect, calling him misbeliever, cutthroat dog, and spitting upon his Jewish garbandine. His harsh words reveal a deep hatred of the Jewish people. In lieu of recognizing Shylock's individuality, Antonio can only see him as a manifestation of his own prejudiced views towards the Jewish population. Antonio sees Shylock as subhuman, not worthy of respect or fair treatment. Shakespeare allows the responder to interpret that Antonio's actions are inconsistent with the core principles of his Christian faith, such as loving thy neighbor and the sovereignty of the individual. Through the exploration of Antonio's flawed practice of Christian morality, Shakespeare masterfully reveals an example of the anomalies, paradoxes, and inconsistencies in people's adherence to their own stated ethics. So this entire thing is a single paragraph within a broader essay, and it has a fairly standard structure. So this first part here is an introduction. We have an idea statement saying people's expression of religious morality can often contradict with their words and actions. That's just an idea that exists in the wider world. It's not only within the Merchant of Venice, it's an idea that doesn't require the Merchant of Venice to exist. Always start your paragraphs off with a broader idea. And then the next line is really a link to the syllabus. So anomalies, paradoxes, and inconsistencies in human behavior and motivation. I think that's pretty much almost word for word out of the common module syllabus. And then the next sentence is a link to the text. And the way that we know that it is a link to the text is because it mentions the character of Antonio specifically. This idea of inconsistent morality is explored through the flaws in Antonio's religious morality. And then the next section really gives some historical context. And you won't often have this section in a paragraph, but it was particularly relevant for the points that I try and make in the following two sections. First main analysis section being about Antonio's contradicting morality. Focus on the topic of usury, charging interest on borrowed money. So here I have the quote, sinful usury, a lender takes what he did not earn to profit off another's need. And then I explain the techniques or a biblical illusion, basically just a reference to the Bible. And then I describe its significance to the text, it demonstrates that Christians believe that it is immoral to practice usury. And then I have some sentences over here explaining why that actually contradicts with some of Antonio's actions and the greater Christian community as a whole. Antonio is a very wealthy merchant. Barring Jews from also practicing those sorts of professions actually benefits Antonio personally and benefits Christians personally because there's less competition in the marketplace which has been artificially lowered by the discriminatory laws against the Jewish people. And that actually means that the Christians are profiting off the hardship of the Jews. And then the next section is also about Antonio's contradictory morality, except this time 
It's focused on treating other people with respect as individuals, loving thy neighbor, that sort of value that exists in Christianity and other religions. And I make that case in the first sentence. Furthermore, a major cornerstone of Christian ethics is loving thy neighbor and the recognition of the individual as a distinct entity. And then the quotes that show Antonio not treating Shylock in that matter is misbeliever, cutthroat dog, and spitting upon his Jewish gabardine, which I think is a, a type of traditional clothes that Jews would wear. His harsh words, so harsh words is kind of like a, loosely a technique there, reveal a deep hatred of Jewish people. That's the effect and significance. In lieu of recognizing Shylock as an individual, Antonio can only see him as a manifestation of his own prejudiced views towards the Jewish population. So Antonio is not actually considering Shylock as another individual as his religion would encourage him to do. Rather, he is just seeing him as a manifestation, as a representation of a greater collective that he despises. And I say that this is inconsistent with the core principles of his own Christian faith, such as loving thy neighbor and the sovereignty of the individual. And then the last section here is just a simple conclusion, which says, through the exploration of Antonio's flawed practice of Christian morality, Shakespeare masterfully reveals an example of the anomalies, paradoxes, and inconsistencies so again, we have that link to the syllabus in people's adherence to their own stated ethics. So this one's a little bit niche. I hadn't heard many people looking at this angle exactly, but I think it's a pretty interesting one to take. All right, that's it for this video. Just to remind you, I also have three other videos, Complexity of Human Nature, Emotions Overriding Values, and Gender Roles. You can find them by clicking the link to the playlist up there now. And if you happen to be doing One Night the Moon or The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime, I also have playlists for those texts in the description below. So good luck, and I'll see you in the next video.